snowboarder Gretchen Blyler is one of the most successful and decorated athletes in the sport. She's won countless awards, including a silver medal at the 2006 Winter Olympics and four gold medals at the Winter X Games. Having spent the last 15 years traveling the colder regions of the world, Gretchen witnessed firsthand the impact of climate change. She's committed to a number of environmental causes and to keeping snow on our mountaintops. She serves on the board of Protect Our Winners. That's a nonprofit organization that's engaging the snow sports community in the fight against climate change. I met up with her at the 2015 Aspen Ideas Festival, where we discussed her environmental activism and the importance of getting into the flow. Obviously, you're an inspiration for all those other little girls sitting around watching TV with their parents, but we don't think about Olympians being inspired and yet you go to the White House and there's this speech mm -hmm. and it inspired you. Can yes. you talk about that? Absolutely. Yeah, so the day before we were going to go to the White House and meet the president with all of the U.S. Olympic team and it was a luncheon and the speaker at that time said to all of us, congratulations, you've become Olympians. You will always be Olympians. It's a title you'll carry with you for the rest of your lives. So this isn't the end, this is just the beginning because now what are you going to do with it? And it really shifted something in me because my whole life I had been working towards fulfilling my own dreams and my own goals and my own aspirations. And that process had really filled me up so much that I was ready to now respond to something bigger than just myself. And in that moment, I realized that I had an opportunity to raise awareness and influence change around climate change, something that I was seeing as a professional snowboarder chasing the snow around the world year round. Um, and it was something that was affecting my livelihood. It was effect affecting my community and it was affecting really my way of life, but it's also um, a huge issue facing humanity. And I think it's up to all of us to sort of stand up and use our platform, whatever it is, and use our voice um, to, to help create awareness. It's an aha moment for you, but um, one might think uh, winning a silver medal is easier than taking on climate change. I mean, it, it is pretty daunting. Uh, I, obviously, you're competitive. You get into the flow. You've <laughs> talked about that. But did you think, uh, you know, I'm biting off a, a pretty big chunk here? Well, at four years old, I decided I wanted to become an Olympian. So <laughs> I guess that was the next, the next natural progression, right? Why not take on climate change? So I guess that's the point is I had no idea as a four-year-old that I was going to get involved in an issue around climate change, but by following you know, the path of your own curiosities and potentials, it takes you in these very interesting places that you never would have imagined yourself. So I never would have imagined myself lobbying on Capitol Hill um, for our environment, but that's where I've come because of this path that I've chosen to take. And what's that experience like? You know, it's, it's, um, it's a really different experience. We kind of come from, you know, basically we come together as an organization called Protect Our Winters. And it's an organization that's bringing together the entire winter sports community under one voice and for one voice. And that is to say that we are here to protect our winters because that's the lever that we have. And so we, you know, step outside of the mountains and we go to Washington, D.C., and we put our power suits on, total fish out of water. Um, but where we are comfortable is telling our stories. We're not climate scientists, but we are human beings who have stories of the changes that are going on and how that's affecting our lives and how we are demanding change. And we're demanding legislation to help us move in a different direction. So it's incredibly inspiring, but it's also, you know, a feeling of um, this huge barge, this slow moving barge. Um, but I think that the point is you have to show up and you have to keep trying. And the more we go back to Capitol Hill, the more we recognize the Congress people and the senators, and they, the more they recognize us and they see that we're here to stay and that we, are serious about our demands. And that slowly starts to change things. 
Yeah, you can talk about snowpack here in Colorado, mm -hmm. um, but you've traveled worldwide, and, and this doesn't just impact the United States, it yeah. impacts the world. I mean, it impacts water supplies in India and Asia. How do you get that message across, and also the sense of urgency? You know, I think um, even 10 years ago, we would have to tell stories of traveling around the world and seeing the, the glaciers in the Alps um, melting and receding. But now I think every single one of us has had a firsthand experience with climate change, whether it was a super storm or whether it's reduced snowpack. Um, we're seeing it all over the world and it's happening more and more frequently. So I think now it's not even a, a question of, is it happening, but it's now what do we do? Um, let me ask you about water and mm -hmm. drinking water. Most mm -hmm. of us drink water, we don't think anything about it. And right. yet you drink water and your husband, same, suddenly you think, wow, we've got to come up with a, a new way of drinking water. Talk yeah. to me about that. And uh, what was that epiphany like? So the epiphany behind our company was that we are both, you know, people who live in the mountains and people who talk about the environment and nature and how it's an integral part of our lives. And so the whole concept is about living a, a conscious and a sustainable lifestyle. And in that area, we were seeing a huge problem in the sustainable marketplace. And it's these water bottles, these reusable water bottles that although they're v helping us get off of single serving disposable plastic water bottles that are filling our landfills and polluting our waterways, they're also incredibly hard to clean. And so they're inefficient. And so we created a water bottle company called Alex, which stands for Always Live Extraordinarily. And it's a stainless steel reusable water bottle that you can open up in the middle so you can actually clean it out. What are you hoping to achieve with the, the bottle? The objective of this company is to help people see that living a conscious and a sustainable lifestyle isn't something that you have to, you, it, it's not a sacrificial lifestyle. It's a lifestyle that can be technolo technologically advanced, it can be beautiful, it can be design driven, and it can just be a part of your everyday lifestyle. The 21 day reusable uh, challenge, can you talk to us about that? Sure. So. That's a challenge um, that I created with my husband and it was around the time where I was starting to be asked to talk around climate change and being a professional snowboarder I felt a little weird about starting to talk about climate change but again I sort of realized that I have a voice and I have a platform and it's up to me to do it because if it's not me then who is so I started talking about the things I was seeing firsthand, but I didn't want to just talk about climate change. I wanted to leave with a call to action. And so the 21 day reusable challenge is a call to action. And the idea is that it takes 21 days to build a habit. And we are asking people to take 21 days and not use disposable plastic water bottles, disposable plastic grocery bags and styrofoam plastic containers. And if you can commit to 21 days without using those three things, most likely you've created a habit and for the rest of your life, you're gonna be more conscious of using those things. Okay, so uh, I wanna kind of piggyback off what you just said because I think a lot of people think it's great Gretchen's going to Capitol Hill and lobbying the politicians because they're the ones that are gonna make a difference. Right. Not me, individually. Right. But you're saying it's 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 a two-way street. It's great to go and push your politicians, yes. but you can do something at home as well. Exactly, um, and, and that's the point, is showing up in every aspect of your life, however you can, using your lever, but really at the end of the day, it starts with us as individuals. And it just, it starts within our everyday actions and decisions and that if every single one of us were more conscious of our actions and decisions, imagine the world that we would be living in. And also imagine a, a world where everyone was engaged and tuned into their own passions and curiosities. Um, everyone would be lit up. And if we came together lit up, I think this world would be a different place. If someone's watching this and they feel inspired and they, and they have that passion, that drive, uh, what would you suggest to them? Start small with the 21 day uh, approach or just go at it whole hog or uh, what are your thoughts? I think my thoughts are that every single one of us, um, we're so different 
and we're unique and we have different talents, gifts, skills, aspirations, desires. And so the idea is get tap tapped into and tuned into that and, s and start acting on it. Have the courage to act on it because it is scary because when you are following your own inner voice, no one else can tell you what to do because you're following something that no one else can hear. And as you do that, it opens you up to bigger and bigger things that you never imagined yourself doing in your wildest dreams. So that's my call to action. <laughs> it's a good one and we'll leave it there. Gretchen, thanks so much. Thank you, I've, I enjoyed it. Coming up next, harnessing the power of social media to save the environment. Our next guest is at the forefront of a global movement to make an impact now for the sake of future generations.